Oh, shit. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Work. All right. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Purse First Impressions. I am so excited because I am joined by the queen of despunking some bulls. She's one of the frock destroyers. Oh, mummy, it's Blue Hydrangea. Oh, mummy, thank you for having me, Bob. I'm sure I was only talking to you last week on Cameo, and now we're here. How glamorous. <laughs> Here's the thing. How is your cameo business now? Because so for those of you who don't know, I'll show. I or, I've only ever ordered one cameo in my whole life, and it was from Blue Hydrangea. I was just sitting in a home, and I was thinking to myself, I would love to hear Blue Hydrangea say, "Power and shower or chair." And I was like, I wanted her to say, "The power of share to have a shower on the shore." And I was like, I should pay her to say this. And how's, <laughs> how's cameo been since then? Business is booming. I had to make myself unbookable because there was just too many people wanting me to say shire and power and share and now and all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, just say it. It's so fat. That is such an American thing. Oh my God, say shower. <laughs> Listen, she said shower. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> I just send them three second cameos of me going power and end the video. <laughs> is there any? Is there anything that Americans say that really tickles you? Is there anything we say, either it be with a Southern accent, or is there anything we say here in the States you're like, that just sounds so funny to me? I feel like, I, I've like grown up watching American TV, so it just, that's like more normal than the Northern Irish accent mm -hmm. to me. Whenever I hear Northern Ireland on TV, I'm like, oh, what is that? But American, <laughs> it's like fine. <laughs> Yeah, a, a lot a lot of people from the UK and Australia, for some reason, those two places think it's so funny the way we say water. They think water is hilarious. Water? Did I not say it the same way? Water? Ha yeah, I guess you said the same way. Some, some would go water. Water. Uh, water. water. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. I suppose. And, and America's like, can I have some water? <laughs> They're so improper. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> Now, wait, lots of British queens last year, I don't think. Okay, so, but I don't think a horror wouldn't, wouldn't. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, I don't feel like, okay, as I'm watching the show, let's hop into it. I don't feel like a horror is going to appreciate. Okay, sorry, let me, let me go back. So, okay, Astina is fresh off her win. Astina has won one challenge in her ASOS jacket. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to quote Cherry Valentine <laughs> she's taking her ASOS jacket and she fucking mopped up a win and they were hating in the back that's why I love that moment where Jeannie Lehman was like she's pure talent and you're jealous yes, and Ahura was that. like zip does Ahura have a reputation for herself in the UK like for, for this behavior I don't I don't know Ahura very well but uh, I can see that she is doing some damage control online I've seen her on Twitter she's like these girls are my sisters I would die for them I love them with all my heart uh 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 yeah but then on, in the show she's like that's disgusting that she wore this ASOS shit I hate her I want to slit her dresses open I'm like calm down bitch <laughs> yeah I don't think Ahura's gonna like the way she like when Ahura watches this she's gonna be like oh yikes yeah. she was like, she's not gonna love it she was like i'm gonna be the villain and i'll get lots of airtime and props to her she's getting the airtime but i'm not vibing with the the shade it's not like it's not like you can't shade the person that just won the challenge if you're shading someone right? with shit i understand but i mean you know but not while you're safe and they won the challenge yeah exactly if you're the if you're the bee's knees then shade are all around you that's why i'm so okay shading. can we talk about the the ultimate okay, I will say this. I'm very I'm very jealous of Aurora because she got to lie down with a taste. And taste is this is a beautiful creature. Taste like is taste hot. is just hot. But the ultimate shame was when she was like, Yeah, love, we'd have a shag, haven't we? It tastes like can you can Yeah, you she taste is like, no, we're not talking about this. I don't want people to know. Cut the cameras dead ass. <laughs> But a horror is going around. To, a horror is telling anyone who will listen, and people who don't care to. Oh, I fuck taste. Oh, I swear, Mike. Oh, I shocked them right up the rump. Like she is telling anyone within a square mile radius. Everyone in the union, in the in the in the EU, who's top and who's bottom. That's what I want to know. I have a feeling that taste is topping and a horror is bottoming. That's then just my taste. Here's guess. my number. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> 
I'll wear Ginny Levin's little window dress and, and sneak into Tess's <laughs> hotel room. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so that is what that, the ultimate shame was taste being like, can you not tell people we fucked? I, on a, I had a lonely night. I My Perry Perry <laughs> chicken didn't come. I was tired. My gig got canceled. It was a it was a comedy of errors that led to us <laughs> slamming guts. Not this. And they live together now, so I wonder, is it like a, a normal thing? Like, are they friends with benefits? Wait, or Yeah. They live together? They moved in with each other, I believe, during quarantine. So it was after this conversation has taken place. So maybe Are they they're... quarantine fuck buddies? There's just a hole between their rooms, actually. And they just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Are they, is it a one bedroom? That's what I want to know. Is the flat a one bedroom? That's what I need to know. This day, I, so. I think they live with like a, a lots of people. So I can imagine that there's some loud loud sex going on because quarantine's lonely you know yeah that you just you just blew my mind i cannot believe that we have another brangy another banji in brooklyn heights situation going on this is she was wild. really trying for that she's like if i'm not a villain i'm gonna be like a love interest you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is narrating her own story um let me just go back to my notes real quick make sure i have everything here access denied what what the fuck but the, the, the technical oh, difficulties <laughs> girl we are really racking them uh, up we are just copy and paste that well this went into mm. what the hell um we didn't talk a lot about the musical if anybody did an outstanding or really bad <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about the musical All right. we also do have a lot of good content let's, let's talk about the musical real quick okay so for me the best part the, the best person in the musical okay I'll go into oh the the voting all right we can talk about the voting again okay so they did a little ballot box moment sorry Jesus Christ we are we are going through all right now the mini challenge this week is this like mini ballot box first of all the 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 Brit crew guy holding the ballot box was like three feet tall it was it was adorable I love a tiny little thing it was the perfect very size high. for me Right, and then they got voted. So the basic queen was Tia Coffee. The shady queen was Ahura. The cocky queen was Lawrence Chani, and the trade of the season was Taste. Does any of this shock you? Eh, not really, to be honest. I mean, Tia said that she had her three um, ugliest outfits out of the way, and then we saw, saw what she wore in the runway. So I mean. <laughs> She's basic girl, and that's but that but she's lovable, so you can forgive she it. She is lovable, but also when she said, "You can't say something like I got the three bad ones out of the way," because now I'm expecting drama, mama. <laughs> I'm expecting to see sickening looks. And then she came out in that dress, and I was like, "Ma'am, it's it's a no from me." <laughs> to quote, that's my Sharon Osbourne. It's it's a no from me, darling. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah a red dress I don't think and then um, of course taste being the trade makes perfect sense but I was shocked at Lawrence being considered the cocky one I thought it would either go to Ohora or Astina yeah yeah actually yeah I could see Astina but again it's just a confidence thing and people feel threatened by, by someone and they immediately go you're cocky but it's just something you don't have confidence you know and I think what they realize is that funny queens do very well in RuPaul's Drag mm. Race. And I think that without a shadow of a doubt, Lawrence is probably the funniest queen oh, on yeah. this season. So quick. I want to talk about this too. There are some look queens. I'm not, this, I don't want to shade anyone in the UK. I did not know there were this many queens who were that good at makeup in the UK. Because I've been <laughs> around. And the really popular queens are a lot of the older queens who don't do all that makeup and who aren't known for that. You younger girls are the ones do, watching the tutorials and, and getting the makeup stuff. So I, it feels like you should have been on season two and Jenny Lemon should have been on season one. <laughs> I can see that. I mean, um, season one, I think they wanted to go essentially British. So there was a lot of old camp slags that were like painted with Sharpies and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And I feel like I'd be comfortable in season two. I'd be like the only one with the personality. No, I'm just joking. So you agree? You think you're really pretty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, look at me. Um, but in the in the name of or in the words of the late great Charlie Hyde's, um, ninety nine percent of British queens uh, <laughs> sing live. So I mean, season one would have been perfect for Ginny Lemon. And I was like this. 
I will say this. A lot of the queens do sing live. Whether they can sing or not, they will be singing live in You've the You've been to UK. a bag of chips show then? <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know any of these queens personally? Like, are, are, sorry, I'm afraid that. Are any of these queens legendary? Are any of these queens like Ooh. everyone knows so-and-so? Everyone knows so-and-so. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows Ginny Lemon. I I think even if you, you haven't um, seen her in person or, or you've, you've heard of her because she's got some stories. She's an old queen. She, she said she's queen of the Midlands. And I mean, I understand it now because I, I've fallen in love with her, as has the rest of the UK. Mm-hmm. And what about Joe Black? People were gat. When Joe yeah. Black walked in, everyone was like, oh, my. Like, they were freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, Joe is like a talent, and and people um, has worked up and down the country, and has worked for years and years and years. Uh, and I only got to know Joe when we were I was applying for Drag Race. We used to talk back and forth about uh, the application process, so it was really nice to see him on. And I said to him before he left, I was like, "You're gonna you're gonna last to the end." And then two days later, I got a message <laughs> saying, "Well, I'm back." <laughs> that that is the Irish. You are the Irish curse. I mean, I can't think of one queen in America that would gag everyone. I mean, maybe if Tyler Perry walked to the front door, but like, there's no, there's no <laughs> one that would. That like, people were freaking out at seeing Joe Black in that room, and I was like, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, UK is a smaller place, I suppose. Uh, so. Uh, but it's not like Joe's been on TV or anything. It's just kind of like you hear these things and uh, white people. Yeah. And I was really sad. Actually, I mean, you know who would have really gagged me is if uh, Lily Savage had gone. Like, if, <gasps> if that would be like Lily Savage is on Drag Race. <laughs> she wouldn't what? even need to apply. She'd just like send in a video like I want to do this RuPaul, and they'd be like, "You're on." I mean, do you think Jodie Harsh will ever apply for the show? I don't know. Jodie Horse is actually, she's going to make a cameo later on in the season, I believe. Um, or that's what the Drag Race UK page has told us. So I don't I know that. I think it's been released. So oh, sure, sure, you sure. never know. I mean, she only has one wig. So would, would they yeah, make her change one, it up? <laughs> exactly. Well, let's talk a little bit about musical rats. Okay. So I like the rats. The idea is really good. I like the idea for rats. And it started off really strong, but it kind of started going a little Kardashian the musical toward the end. <laughs> I actually, I, I think that in Britain, the musical should have been like the, the like stellar, like this is what we're known for, live singing, live dancing. Um, uh, it was all right. It was a bit, it was a bit hodgepodge. They were, they were vibing vinegar <laughs> strokes with their performances. Yeah, well, it was very, um, it was very uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber, who is a British icon, I understand. Um, he is. And there was some Phantom of the Opera in there. There were a lot of, there's a lot of uh, UK uh, musical theater representation. And that's what I was thinking to myself when, um, when Veronica was talking. I was, is Veronica a West End actor? Oh, no, I think she's a wannabe. Like, she has, like, applied so many times and then, like, has never gotten on. Bless her. Because she's always like, let me tell you, am I bread and butter? Honey, it's theater. Oh, yeah, yeah, honey. <laughs> and I was like, all right, Miss <laughs> I think, well, she Excuse was really me. impressive. And, and from such a small little um, nerdy little body, I was like, girl, she's got some pipes. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. The, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Uh, <laughs> Some points. Um, um, and we didn't do our favorites. Yeah, we didn't do favorites. Last thing, favorite. All right. So we must pick our favorites from the runway and our least favorite. What is your favorite look from the runway? My favorite is probably Veronica Green because she made it herself. And although the makeup wasn't all there, the outfit itself was gorgeous. And I loved it. My favorite look, believe it or not, was Cherry Valentine's first look. Mm. If I saw them all lined up, that yellow, I would, that was in that bigot. That was my favorite. Of the looks, that was one look was my favorite one, oddly enough. And now she's gone. Oh, bless her. Well, there was a lot of ugly looks tonight, so it's not hard to stand <laughs> out, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so speaking of ugly, which was your least favorite of all these? What was your least favorite? I feel like we could say it at the same time and it would you know, be the same answers. Obviously, like... Well, who was yours? Lesser. Tia. <sighs> yeah. Okay, Tia, I thought you were going to say someone a, else. Was like... Well, well, Sister Sister's middle, when she was wearing that 
Like mm-hmm. the, the TNT is opening. Sister Sister's opening look was just like the outfit you wear between, like from the car to the gig. Like I don't it's know just, what yeah. that was. It's not even that. But, the yeah. outfit that you don't wear. <laughs> but Tia Coffee, I want to get my hands on her because she is so pretty. And she has an amazing body. And like, mm. girl, if I had that body, that face, I would be shutting the kid. Naomi Swallows wouldn't stand a fucking chance against me. Yeah, she's yeah, she's just taste. But I feel like without the confidence in herself, if she had more confidence in how she looked, she'd be able to pull off these incredible looks as well. You know, because she relies so much on her personality. I think. Well, I have a feeling that Tia Coffee is taste from the future coming back to say you lose your style. <laughs> It's me, you from the future. I'm just gonna say, save your clothes. They all go up in a fire. Just please, please, please. I have to go. They're coming. <laughs> oh my! Right. Oh my! All right. Is that everything, Mitch? All right. So we're gonna start. We're gonna. I'm gonna intro the looks, and then we're gonna do them from the beginning. We're gonna skip over Lawrence's because it's not exciting. All right. Here we go. Hold on. <laughs> So this week, the runway category is surprise, surprise. I, I, I guess that means like, here's a reveal. Like, what is that? Is that another British colloquialism I don't get? Yes, yeah, surprise, surprise is like a reference to a TV show that Cilla Black did. It's like, surprise, surprise. Vivian can do it better. And uh, Sheridan Smith, who's the guest judge this week, she did Cilla Black on the West End. So that's why... Um, they did it for her. I think the Wait, surprise so she is... Played the, she played Stella Black. Yeah, S- S- Stella Black. She played her on the on the stage. Um, and I don't know much more about her other than that. She's like... Yeah. Is, she the, is, is she the one where Vivian's going, um, I used to do Ringo's the model. Huh? Is that yeah. Stella Black? <laughs> That's her, yeah. Oh, hi, it's Chihuahua. Um, they used to take... <laughs> I don't know anything about Stella Black, but when I, as soon as Vivian did that, I... Oh my god, the mic's been backwards the whole time. Oh my god, Jacob. <laughs> the dot has to go forward. All right, I'm saying the mic's been backwards the whole time. Um, anyway, so let's talk about Ahura. So what do you think of what Ahura's wearing? Like, I mean, I'll go first. I don't want you to have to be shady. I, like, neither one of these looks is stunning. The idea of going from a groom to a bride is not particularly innovative. And I don't think either one, I don't like either one of these looks individually. Like, if I saw her wearing this outfit out, I'd be like, hey... <laughs> uh, yeah i mean i was a little bit gagged by the hair i didn't expect it to come out of the hat but other than that it was kind of like a man's non like tailored suit into a basic white dress from from asos which is funny because she keeps on shading astina from buying from asos <laughs> <laughs> dude that is true that is true but yeah this was just i mean i will give her props for the beehive hidden inside of a top hat that was cute, but none of and this just does not do it for me at all. Like at all. Yeah, the looks aren't aren't selling me the standard of drag that she thinks that she has. If that makes sense. <laughs> you are. You might. I think you might be the new shade shade minister, or whatever the, the prize. <laughs> I, was. I already been the shady queen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's skip over to Ginny Lemon. So, okay, so the judges didn't seem to like this. They, they they seemed very underwhelmed. I think revealing to the exact same dress is funny. To me, it's hilarious. She even had it lined on the inside. So they got to see this <laughs> ridiculous gag. And then she turned around and that hairy ass rump was sticking out. I love that. I mean, a big hairy arse in Ru- RuPaul's face. That is iconic. And I've never seen it done before. <laughs> She didn't even shave Are you it. mad like, now? Are you mad now that you didn't stick your ass in RuPaul's face? He said I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> A girl's got to get cast. At all stars. When all stars <laughs> calls, Blue will be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's look at Cherry Valentine. Okay, first of all, Cherry's first look, I love i love this look it is i would wear this it is yeah. very cute the bows in the back of the shoes i you like this look back everything from that from the big bow thing this is all good for me yeah me too i really liked it it was camp it was big drag it's very british it's um yeah cute i love it and how do you feel about this second look now the second look is 
it's a little, it's a little on the nose. Like, I don't need you to write gender across your belly. Like, come on. <laughs> I know. I feel like this story is really cute, though, because she, I read on her Instagram that she meant for it to be like this thing that gender doesn't matter. It's like a rainbow baby. It's like, oh, yay. Don't do gender reveals. Something. But the wig offended me. The stomach offended me. <laughs> the dress offended me. She should have popped the balloon that was in her belly and, and let the confetti fall out of her ass, you know? That would have been way more fun. That would have, that would have been something. Yeah, I mean, I listen, I love a statement. It's great. Political statements are great. But that being said, this dress is ugly. <laughs> facts are facts. <laughs> I mean, facts are facts, America. So, okay, tea or coffee? I, I can't even bring myself to... Put it on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe she paid someone to make this. This is blowing oh. my mind. This looks like one of those like courses that you would get and like at a shop that would like girls wear it for Halloween. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, I'm gonna be a little bit riding hood and they put a cape and like, oh my god, I'm red riding hood. <laughs> I wonder how much like she said she paid for this and she's gonna ask for her money back. Like I hope that that ten pounds really um, gets back to her. <laughs> yeah, this is from this is a ten pound dress. Like I can, this is no, no, just no. The wig is back. Do a lot of queens. Admit. Do a lot of queens in the UK pad? Do you pad? I love a big ass, and I've recently just got into wearing tits as well. But um, I, yeah, I think it's it's like becoming more popular. But I don't think it's like mainstream just yet. But we're getting there. I'll, I'll send Tia, uh, Tia my pads. Work. She needs them. Now, everyone online is like, you didn't talk about Ellie Diamond. You didn't talk about Ellie. Uh, Courtney was like, you didn't talk about Ellie Diamond. <laughs> I don't know why I always say her name with an Australian accent, Ellie Diamond. Um, but that being said, <laughs> I, don't, I feel like I'm being shady. These looks are not good. <sighs> I feel like Ellie's the queen on the budget. She's young. She works in a drive through She has gotten some cheap-ass fabric, and she's made some uh, looks that were more interesting than some of the other looks that, that were expensive, you know? So props to her for that. Well, are, they interesting in a, are they interesting in a good way? Would you wear that lion outfit? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Would you wear that Tin Man outfit? Probably, unless I was cooking myself in like a in an oven. No, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. Like these. Also, it is the exact same silhouette three times in a row. I I can't. I cannot get into this outfit. I just. She did. She posted a glow up version of this on her Instagram. What she would have done if it wasn't reveals. And props to her. They're iconic, but. I mean, this is the main stage. This is the where you want to spend the money and do like the the big the big gigaramas. Exactly, a scarecrow dress and a silver dress. I don't think. I mean, that's where <laughs> I am. <laughs> I love. That. I don't think. Yeah, this is. Yeah, gal. No, I love when UK girls say yeah, gal. Gal. I, I, we don't say that. I, I don't say that. I, that was something that I was introduced by the other girls. I don't say it. Yeah, gal. Yeah. Um, but I so, think it's the thing that brought Ellie into the top, though, because um, she wasn't great in Rats. Well, she was all right. She was not, but but she did have a very good... Um, she did do a good job in, like, the idea is what I'm saying. Yeah. The idea yeah, yeah, she yeah, had yeah. for this was good. All right, one sec. Jacob, can you bring back... Oh, here it is. Here, I found it. Oh, I just got my COVID test back. I'm COVID negative. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's go into Astina. Astina, um, this look is good. I mean, this um, mouth um, prosthetic is not particularly well done. It's not blended at all. Um, <laughs> I mean, but at her all. body is just so sick. I love Astina. She can wear um, anything and make it look great as shown by her previous roadways. No, I'm just joking. Um, she... <laughs> the thing that I've, I, I really noticed whenever I was at Drag Race is it, it truly is how you present things on the runway because if you're giving off this confidence and this vibe, the judges really pick up on that. And I was just clambering 
bag of chips, she would walk on the runway, she'd go, and then she'd run up the runway. Whereas like someone like Vivian was really serving you like, like yeah. confidence. And it's really important. You know, I agree. This, I mean, this, this, none of this is particularly stunning, but she looks good at it. And that's just on period. Like, that's I'm buying the end what of the she's story. selling. Um, let's talk about Sister's Sister. <sighs> <laughs> oh, it's the makeup for me. <laughs> What's, it's this, okay, it's this horrible Trixie Mattel gown. The first one? I could see Trixie in that. I think I have seen Trixie in that, actually. <laughs> and I just don't know what's going on on the cat suit. I don't understand. The I'm, wig com- went I'm with neither lost. look. <laughs> it went with neither look. Even when she took it off, I was like, finally, you've taken the wig off. That's the best reveal you've done. <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't get it. This is, I just don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't get it at. Oh. Yeah, I I actually don't really don't mind the second look. Um, I think that because it didn't go with the wig, that's the only thing that threw it off. But the first look, um, yeah, it's not the best. Well, I suppose it's probably it's, hard to pull together a reveal look. I've never tried, so. Yeah, I mean, I think that she revealed that that these dresses are that she has ugly dresses. That was to, she revealed <laughs> that she had a, a hideous dress. I can't, no. She revealed that her and Tia Coffee go to the same people to get their costumes made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about Veronica Green. Veronica's makeup is a little, this is coming from me, her makeup's a little understated. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little bit of blush. She really reminds me of, like, Courtney, the way she paints her face. It's, like, very, like, femme. Yeah, Courtney's another one that you all have embraced in the UK. She's like a celebrity over there, which is so... I mean, she well, couldn't make it in Australia, couldn't make it in America, but the UK was like, we'll take her. <laughs> I know, we're, we're not that picky. <laughs> I, always, I always say for years, listen, you all did something that we could not do. We tried for 30 years in America. You all had one year and you turned Michelle Visage into a celebrity. So you all can do the things that we can't do in America. So you all are really big in the UK. It's really nice that they treat their queens there. Now, that being said, what do you think about Veronica's look? I mean, the, the gag is that Veronica has made every single look that's gone down this runway so far. And they've all been pretty incredible. And she learned to sew specifically for these looks. Can you fault that? Like, that's incredible. So this is like her, she started sewing... When she got this call? To make call? her drag race stuff? Yeah. Isn't that a gag? That is a gag. I mean, this... Th- here's the thing. When you're doing a reveal, and I get it, you don't have to cover yourself from the neck to the ankles if your outfit underneath isn't also from the neck to the ankles. So I yeah. think this is where um, where uh, Sister Sister went a little sister, awry, yeah. where Veronica went a little bit awry, is that their underneath outfits are up to the neck and to the... To the wrist and ankles and now they have to make this outfit on top this is so big but that being said she looks fine and I, I do not love veronica's makeup but she does look fine i th- yeah i love this bodysuit though I, like i'm i'm wondering how it's made but it's it's crazy that someone who's just got into like making their own garments can make something like that i'm like like i wouldn't know where yeah. to start also this screenshot of her like climbing out of it is like hilarious yeah <laughs> she's like That's pretty good. help <laughs> So, okay, let's talk about taste. Let's talk about the trade of the season. Taste is, I mean, revealing from one color to another color, to the same color, is a little bit, like, you have to do more. Yes. I, I, I think the judges are right. Like, which is, but I will say this, she genuinely looks beautiful. I was just about to say that. That is the fiercest mug that I've seen on the RuPaul's Drag Race UK stage full stop. Gorgeous. Well, that is a big statement coming from the mug queen of season one, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is gorgeous. She is UK Naomi Smalls. She is mm. legs up to her fucking armpits. She's great, but I agree with him. Like, taking off a coat, but then you're also wearing this other thing underneath that I can't tell where the coat stopped and the second coat began. In, it, it, yeah. it was not working. Insider tea, I heard that she performed uh, in this uh, outfit the week before she left for Drag Race, so it's definitely like her good old faithful performance gig number, you know? 
Well, I think it's a bad luck out. I think it's a bad luck outfit. She needs, she needs to because it did, it did not do her any favors. Okay, but they make you Let's, walk the runway twice. So how does she get the blood out yeah. for the second the second run? I don't know. I mean, like I imagine she just didn't do it the first time. That's what I'm assuming. Oh, okay. She just didn't do it the first time. Yeah. So you're a pro. So. Let's move on to Bimini Bamboo Lash, my favorite drag name from Drag Race UK season two. <laughs> this hair is, I love this hair. Me too. This reveal was the biggest disappointment in Drag Race history. Yeah, I feel like it should have full on been just like straight up uh, food coloring and like water balloons. Imagine how the splashes yeah, she- and. All that shit. She should have made them into water balloons. It, it seemed like she just put a little bit of acrylic paint inside <laughs> and was like, all right, love, I'm vegan. It's all do. As long as no, long as no animals paint. were getting hurt. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, I get it. You're green, but girl, like, we're on Drag Race. Like, this, I don't understand what she was even, I get what she's going, I've seen it where the, where the machines come up and paint the, the dresses, but this was really disappointing. It went, yeah. it just went nowhere. It, nothing happened. She should have just, just like, okay. It's, she, it's not, the, it's not the biggest disappointment because I will never forget that Asia O'Hara did th- throw butterflies on the ground that were completely crushed by Michael, by uh, Cameron Michaels. So that did. Are we allowed happen. to talk about that? In, on in Bimini Bula, <laughs> she's a flipping vegan. <laughs> <laughs> She should just had like paint over her hands and just like got to the end of the runway and just went oh, like just spread it over herself. I mean, they just they should have been water balloons. Why weren't they water balloons? Like, why weren't they water balloons? Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Blue, answer my question. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so, in the end, we found that there's a lip sync between Cherry Valentine and Taste. The judges have done all their critiques. Okay, I'm shook because let me put this way. Sorry. Okay, I'm shook because I just did not see either one of them be going home early. I, I legit thought that Cherry Valentine was going to win the season. I really did. You said that last week, and I thought I was the only one, like, seeing this. Because I was like, Cherry Valentine is my, like, favorite. She's serving looks. Uh, she's got a camp laugh. She's got body for days. And she's, like, a really put-together drag queen. Uh, but as soon as she, she was told that she was in the bottom, like... It, you could tell that she was so nervous and on the edge and didn't expect it, which is, like, the biggest, like, thing you, you, you shouldn't do whenever you're in that position. Just, like, give up. Yeah, it was... I Yeah, I will say this. She got defeated. And she got crushed. As soon as she was told she wasn't the best, it it destroyed her. And she, yeah. she just couldn't... And also, memory is a... I wish... I could have lived to memory. Watching them, honestly, I was like, can someone else, just anyone else, someone from production, do you want to lip sync this? Because I'm sure it would have more emotion. Right? <laughs> what, song, what song did you lip sync to? I did Venus by Bananarama, and I did Cheryl Call My Name to Cheryl, in front of Cheryl, doing a Cheryl song. Wasn't rigged, I promise. <laughs> Versus Cheryl. <laughs> you were, it wasn't versus Cheryl, though, was it? it of course it was. We love Cheryl. Well, it was. Well, it was. Was it versus Cheryl in front of Cheryl doing a Cheryl song? I mean, yeah. I mean, I was allowed to be defeated in that moment because I, I knew that the gig was up. The gig was up. <laughs> Cheryl, 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 and the one blue would just be like, "What am I supposed to do?" In- <laughs> and I got Cheryl to pin my wig before we went onto the runway, and of course the fucking wig came off. Of course it did, that bitch. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky little queen. So as soon as I see it, to be fair, before I even heard what song it was, my thought was, I think Taste is gonna beat uh, Cherry, and I'm just shocked to see Cherry Valentine go home. Me too. How do you feel? I mean, it's the second so week in early. A yeah, a big hitter has gone home. So I think if I was the other girls, I'd feel so much more comfortable in the competition with these two <laughs> heavy hitters gone. But watching them go is really heartbreak- heartbreaking because you're like rooting for them because they're talented. Yeah. Listen, if Lawrence or Estina go home next week, I am i don't know what to do. I would be like, all of my thoughts and notions were, are fucked. Cause <laughs> I thought the top three were going to be Cherry Valentine, um, Estina, and Lawrence Cheney. That was my top three. I can see that, yeah. Uh, but you never know. Maybe Ellie has like a little voodoo doll of Lawrence just like in her <laughs> Scottish bedroom made out of haggis. She just like spins it. 
<laughs> so as of now, Blue, who are you picking as your favorite? Your who is your top three right now? Now that Cherry's gone, oh. who's your top three? I think Astina has been really strong and confident, and, and it seems like it's unshakable as well. Um, Lawrence, and I want to see Jenny in the top. I mean, why not? Who, who knows what she could pull out? I mean, they had, like, what, six months during COVID to, like, pack new <laughs> shit, so maybe she threw a few wigs in. <laughs> so you tell her that you fancy a slice. Fancy Is that what you're slice. <laughs> I would say my top three right now are um, Lawrence, Lawrence Channing. I can't say Lawrence Channing. I have to say Lawrence Channing, <laughs> Astina, and Taste. Taste is now, even though she had a rough week, Taste is now in my top three. Now, before we go, I want to do something really fun. I'm always trying to do an Irish, British, or Scottish accent. Can you now give me a little bit of your American accent? And uh, What do you want me to say? Um, I would like for you to say... Tell me what you had for breakfast. I'll give you a hint. It's American. You had like sausage, egg, and cheese, and then you had uh, some pancakes. Well, I think I had some like pancakes. I had some bacon. I had some fries, French fries. Uh, or I could talk New York. I had some pancakes from the, the guy on the street, you know? <laughs> That is great. Um, whenever I do Irish, it's always like a six, like, I take me tired to have some pancakes in the morning. Yeah, and then I sit down to the <laughs> store. Yeah, that's it. We, you have to say, this is a Belfast thing, right? You have to say, how now, brown cow? But you have to say it in Northern Irish, which is, hi, now, brown cow. <laughs> hi, now, brown cow. That's it. <laughs> I love it. I'm Northern Irish now. All right. So um, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, also, you all at home, thank you for watching. Join us next week when we will be watching RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2, Episode 3. I got it. I nailed it. Oh, my man. <laughs>